It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So this is going to be probably the first part maybe of a longer video or it's going to be a multi-part series but what I'm looking at at the moment is a airbrush set. Now airbrush keyboards probably not something that uh, we think terribly related but if you know the kind of stuff that I've worked on before it will kind of make sense when I tell you that airbrushing for painting artisans and cases, keycap sets are essentially a, a potential tool and so that's why I've kind of gone down this pathway to have a look at airbrush and a part of me is also thinking about can an airbrush actually be an effective and gentle way to actually clean your keyboard. So when Banggood came to me and said hey you know we're interested if you would like to review any more of our products I said sure, had a look through, had a discussion with them and said maybe you can send me an airbrush kit and an airbrush cleanup. So they did. Now of course as always I do have to tell you that everything that I say today, everything that I show you today in this video is a hundred percent my opinion, my opinion only and this is not a paid advertisement whatsoever. Any issues, critiques, uh, failures and whatnot is completely mine and mine alone. So let's flick over to the screen and have a look at what the actual products are and what they claim to be. So here is the actual listing for the set that I have here in front of me that will open up and have a look and you can see at the moment it's about a hundred Australian dollars convert that to whatever it is in your local currency uh, it can come from China or USA and we zip down through so we're talking about supposedly 25 psi about 13 liters per minute in terms of its flow rate so flow rate is very important in regards to how fine it can atomize supposedly uh, it's got a pen holder trachea adapter the actual airbrush pump uh, I think they there's usually a description in regards to how big the nozzle is I'm not sure but it might be one or two sizes uh, it's not it's not really showing because I think there's like a 0.2 or a 0.5 I don't know I, I couldn't actually tell you but uh, so there's a bunch of images here not super descriptive the only thing that I note here is after using the pump for 30 minutes shut down a few minutes wait for it to cool so it's telling you only got about a half an hour work life before you're running a risk of damaging this unit. Uh, let me just have a look if it actually says anything about the needle size, no. So in the kit we should be seeing a box, a pump, adapter, a oil trap and a bit of hose. You, some detailed images on how to take it apart and clean it. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward. So that's the first item and the second item is this so it's just a, a cleaning kit and a pot I specifically asked for this as well because I didn't want to be in a situation where trying to clean a airbrush was going to be a bit of an issue and when I saw that this was actually available I said why not and they said sure makes perfect sense so in theory we should get in this a pot some brushes some tip cleaners uh, and we can see there's a whole bunch of stuff brushes uh, needle diameters that it can clean, a hanger so you can actually stick it in and, and sort of just spray and clean out. Um, yeah, something pretty straightforward. So let's get down onto the desktop. Okay, now what I was talking about before in regards to artisans is later on, hopefully, when I have a chance to really sort of put together uh, a bit more on that, I've got some blank keycaps that I've actually prepared. Now if you've seen any of my uh, ink artisans that I've done before and this is typically for example are the ones that I've got here or my escape key which is over here as well as the spacebar that I've got on my normal keyboard that I use here at home. It basically is a medium applied to the keycap that allows me to put inks onto it. Primarily fountain pen inks that I've got a reasonable collection of. So I'm thinking rather than doing 
say acrylics straight off because I've got a large amount of fountain pen ink, I can put that through and spray these keycaps and see how I go with that and how effective it actually works. So I'll just put them aside for the moment. Now, this is this is completely sealed, but I'm going to cut it open from this end because it's got my address on the other side. <laughs> Not that, you know, it's that big a deal if I get doxxed anyway, uh, but I doubt that too much harm would necessarily come to me, but you never know what the internet can do to you. So obviously this is the upside down box. Oh, and that is the actual cleaning pot. That was sent to me separately. Uh, and well, the outer packaging on that was trashed. So I kind of already removed it. So they've given me a adapter because they understand where I'm at is probably not a native fit. Okay, so the box has got a little bit of damage, but it was just in plastic, didn't have really any protection. The label and barcode is faded. It's such a, a nondescript box. There is nothing on here to tell you at all what you've got, uh, which hopefully what we've got inside is actually an airbrush kit. So we'll find out. Okay, so it looks like it is. There's the hose, as we expected, individually packaged. Okay, we have the actual airbrush itself. It was bubble wrapped and it's already shrink wrapped as well. Put that aside. We have an instruction manual. A good weight for it what it is so there is the actual uh, oil air separator this is the pump there we go we've got a holder which I'm assuming will just fit into there and then this should be the power adapter <coughs> which it is okay some of that in there for the moment. Right. Manual mini air compressor T100. They really like their T series. It's like the TS80, the uh, TA100. So LED light on off switch, a holder, outlet, and adjustment valve. It tells me the air output is 10 liters per minute, whereas we saw on the web page it said 13 liters per minute. So there's a bit of discrepancy going on there. Max pressure is still 25 psi, it's 12 volts, and it's less than one amp, so it shouldn't overload anything in particular. Assemble the parts together, put it in a steady position, uh, AC cord, and connect the adapter to electrical source, working pressure too large, rotate to get a proper working pressure. Clean, dry, ventilated, contact 0 to 40, not an issue, don't let it run for more than 30 minutes. If don't assemble the hose and airbrush, put it in the holder when you don't use it so it's not broken. The compressor should be used with a single action airbrush. Okay, so this is really interesting because uh, I'm not 100% sure what a double action airbrush is, and wow! This is so unusual. There is an actual complete breakdown of the pump, which you normally would never get for something like this, because you would just it would just die, and then you would just end up getting another one, or it'd be replaced if there was any warranty on it, which I don't know. But does this mean you can actually somehow, somewhere, order spare parts? It's actually well drawn. So awesome, kudos. Kudos. Um, it doesn't actually tell me where or how the oil uh, adapter is connected, but maybe if I have a look at these pictures, it'll tell me where it needs to go. Uh, just a quick look. No, it doesn't. Very helpful.
I, I would expect that the... Ah, it goes on to the bottom of the airbrush. Okay, all right. That makes kind of sense, I guess. Right, so let's crack this open and see if it will actually pump and if it will actually produce air. I don't have any means of testing if it's going to produce 10 or 13 litres of air per minute. But, you know, that's actually quite a lot of air. Uh, I don't know what a standard air brush requires, but if you do, please, of course, leave your comments below. Okay, so let's flick that up. Oh, it's got another layer of protection and holding in there. So we've got a glass, no, it's a plastic squeezy bulb. We've got a wrench, a tiny, tiny little slit wrench there. And then there is the brush itself. So from my understanding, this is a dual action because you press down to let the air flow and then you drag it back. Oops. Um, I would have thought that screwed on. I guess not. Is it just, it's just a press fit? It's just, yeah, it's just a, oh, okay. So it was just a little bit light, but that would have been nice if it was a screw on. Um, okay, so that back end was a little bit loose. So from my understanding from watching other videos is you press the button down to let the air valve down here open and then as you move that back, the needle moves back and increases how much flow comes out the front, which opens up how big the spray is. And if we go down from the front, you can't, you can't see that, but um, I can't see that either if the needle is actually... Okay, so it is. Uh, I don't know if that's going to focus very well on the front it'll, it'll try okay so there's the needle and if I drag it back you can just see it poking back and forth it is doing it I, I promise you it is even if we can't see it and of course you'd probably just want to cap that so design wise um, I guess you're meant to sort of hold it like that and press and, and sort of open up it's a little bit cumbersome. Um, I mean, thumb action probably would be better, but it doesn't give you a lot of control. I, I don't know. This is something that I'll have to experiment with at some point in time. Uh, let's open up the hose. Got a, uh, a cable tie. Right, so both ends look identical, doesn't seem to be a specific end. The hose is actually quite flexible, uh, which is good, which is nice. So let's put one end into the actual compressor. Now, when you work with compressed air, by the way, uh, it's very important that you understand compressed air safety. It's very important that you shouldn't be blasting it onto skin surfaces. Now at 25 PSI, I don't know what the inherent risk is, but there will be some, even if it's very low, that you can inject air into, through your skin, into your bloodstream. Now the higher the PSI, the more uh, pinpoint that that airflow is, the greater that risk, especially if you have open wounds, okay, or if you've got thin skin through either age or other means such as like, say, chemical uh, effects on your skin. And if you get air into your bloodstream, even in micro bubbles, then you're going to be essentially causing an aneurysm or a blood clot to happen. So it's actually quite risky. It's actually quite dangerous. Uh, in the labs that I've worked in over the years, it's always 
been a never direct a compressed airflow at anybody or to use it to clean yourself off because it's just that dangerous. Okay, so I do want to warn you that if you are going to be playing with an airbrush like I am for the first time ever, to always keep that in mind, to heed compressed air safety. So this is the oil and air filter. It's essentially a trap where it's got a very fine mesh up the top here. So any oil particulates that come out of the compressor, when it goes through the line, as it comes up through this, will condense on that mesh and it should drop down. And then you should be able to uh, disassemble probably, or yeah, so you can push you can push this little valve up and that will allow you to drain out any oil that is entrapped. And it also serves as a relief valve. And then if you have an overpressure, it should in theory cause that to spring open and release the overpressure rather than it becoming dangerous. So it's kind of a, a double action valve, I guess, in a way. So I'm just going to make that snug. And this is a bayonet or something. Well, that doesn't feel like it should connect, so I'm not going to force that. And that seems like it goes straight in, which it does. Okay, and it doesn't need to be more than finger tight, really. All right, so there we go. So that's the whole assembly. The hose has got uh, a little bit of sort of rotation in it, so I'm just going to straighten that up. <coughs> And there we have, there's the airbrush. Okay, so there's a holder. Although it's... There we go. Okay, so it's got, you got to push it in a bit and it sort of just holds it with friction. The end of it is, I'll take that out. The end of it is just poking past there. Okay, so the the actual hose is just hanging off. It's got a good amount of length, you know, from table to my head and back. So let's just uh, close that up for the moment. Get out the power. Now, noting that this is a uh, overseas power supply and it does take 110 to 240, I'm not going to use this adapter because I have a 110 power supply. Now. The only reason why I'm going down this path of using the 110 power supply is my experience with a lot of these devices now uh, is it works better on its native design. So while these power supplies claim that they're actually able to take 240, I've experienced that is not necessarily the case. And if they do take 240, they don't necessarily work as intended. So as you can see, um, I have a power transformer here. It's just a, a Chinese made one, and it'll do uh, 240 to 110, 500 volt amps. So it should be more than adequate to do what it needs to do, which funnily enough, it has a two prong, so it will need a adapter to my local 240 power supply <laughs> to generate 110. Okay, so let's. We have power on down here, and I'm going to take that out. So, in case anything goes horribly, horribly wrong, um, I'll leave this up here so we can see if there's anything happening, and on it goes. Okay, so there's nothing leaking, but then... Woo! It's quite noisy. Um, but it is, it is doing the job. 
Now if I put that in there. <laughs> now I don't know which way the valve's gonna go, so that's just so that's all that's quite tight. If I unscrew it. There's practically no air coming out at all now. So if I turn that in, still no air. Now I've got some air. So this this adjustment valve does pretty much nothing. Um, I'm just experiencing that if I turn it out at all. I have a, a complete loss of like there's no air after like so so if we have a look there is a a a hole here in that and essentially it's just going like a quarter turn and there's no air coming out of this at all so I'm just going to turn that all the way in and seems like it's quite a gentle flow, like I'm about this far apart, probably a foot, 30 centimeters, and I can feel the spray. So, yeah. Now I know I just told you about compressed air safety and not to do that. You'll notice I wasn't right up, right up here doing that. I was quite far away because I, I knew that the dispersion of that was gonna be quite gentle. So, that, I mean, I know the microphone's picking that up, but I don't know how loud that is, so I'm gonna pull out my phone and my sound meter. Where is my sound meter? Uh, apps, sound meter. We're talking about 60 decibels. Okay, so that's what that you is what you're going to expect. Now it's still been running a couple of minutes now. Uh, I'm not going to put some liquid into it because obviously my desk is currently not set up for that. But I do have a bit of a dusty keyboard because I'm not very good at cleaning at the moment. So you, you can probably see that there's a bit of dust happening here. <laughs> it actually works! So let's just have a look uh, if it'll focus. Yeah, so you'll see there's a bit of sort of dust in between the keycaps there. Probably not super noticeable, but uh, if I sort of run that, you'll see there's a bit of, well, maybe you won't see, but there is there is definitely dust there. So if I, <laughs> it works, it works so well. It, it's just, I mean, it's just blowing away surface dust at the moment, um, but, okay, so this, this is not really showing it very well, you're going to have to trust me, but there is, there is a, a bit of dust that is actually hanging around in here, and uh, it, is, it is definitely getting rid of it. I mean, it's probably not a, a good idea that I'm just blasting it into the air here, but, um, oh, did you see that? Did you see that? There's, there's chunks of, yeah, there are chunks of dust that are just, just escaping between my keycaps now. So the first objective of testing this is will this replace a can of air? Yes, it will.
But the thing that I'm finding right now is that it doesn't have a lot of capacity. So when it's running up, you can get a bit of blast, but the longer you hold it, the weaker it gets because it struggles. So it's got a very, very small, it's just weakening by the second if you hold it for longer than maybe two seconds. So it's obviously the internal sort of capacity for it's very, very small, very, very poor. But for what it is, It answers the first question. Will it dust the keyboard? Yes. <laughs> will it will it be effective in painting artisan keycaps and, and distributing a a paint? We'll we'll find out hopefully in the next part. Dusting my mouse as well. Wow, that noise is um it's quite a drone now that it's off it's remarkably quiet now feeling this compressor uh, the bottoms quite cool the side oh, there's like a little patch down the back here which I feel is probably what's going on um, I don't know where the air intake is <laughs> So, I'm just going to unplug that. Um, there's no slots, front or back. So, where does it intake the air? Is it through this? Is that what this regulating valve is? That's so weird. I honestly don't know where it, it gets its air intake from. Um, you know what? I'm going to plug it back in and then see if I can feel where it's actually pulling air from. I'm super stumped. I feel like it's coming from the front, but it's like it's trying to pull air through the the actual case through through like the slits. The I'm, I'm absolutely stumped. Um, anyway, it doesn't really matter where the air gets pulled into this, I suppose, except for the fact that if you put it on a surface and it's limiting the amount of air going into it, uh, then obviously that does matter. Maybe, uh, you know, the this parts breakdown will give me a quick idea of where the air is actually coming in. Um, what that valve is actually meant to do. Hmm. 
I, it doesn't give me any indication at all whatsoever. Well, there's a, a screw hole there that you can feel through the sticker. But, um, an absolute mystery. Well, either way, it pulls in air and it works. It's just very limited. So, hopefully, in the next part, we'll pull out some of these keycaps. I'll put in some water, some ink. I'll have a bit of a, a wet space available here, and then we can start doing a bit of painting. So, there we go. A nice and simple kit. Um, and then, of course, once I actually put in some ink and water, we'll also clean up the brush and pass it through this pot just to make sure that it does what it's meant to do and it's comfortable, easy to use, makes sense, and so on and so forth. But that looks fairly straightforward. So if you like this kind of stuff, uh, please, of course, hit that like button. Please hit that share button if you think somebody else would be interested in getting this kit for what it is, for what it's worth. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please hit that subscribe channel to share and appreciate our content. Of course, if you are a subscriber, make sure you hit that bell icon so that you get a notification whenever a new video comes out as well. So thank you, Banggood, for sending this for me to check out. Hopefully, I'll have a bit more fun with it very shortly. And of course, as usual, until next time, happy clacking. <laughs>